Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Larry Snow and today's video we're going to be taking a look at MailChimp merge tags. What are they? How they work? How to set them up? And that's all coming up next. So stay tuned. So MailChimp merge tags gives you the ability to add functionality and personalization and customization to your campaigns. There are two types of merge tags. There are system merge tags and audience merge tags. System merge tags are things like the RSS process, the RSS merge tag that you can add to your campaign. Audience merge tags are coming from your signup form such as first name, last name, company, birthday, personal color, favorite color, that type of thing. So we're gonna start taking a look at how all this works. So to start things off, we're gonna go in and add a merge tag to our signup form. So the first thing you have to do is go into your audience level. In this case, I'm at Strategic Marketing Solutions. Over on the right-hand side, I'm gonna select the Manage Audience drop-down list and select Setting. From the settings part, we can select audience and merge tag, and that will take you to this page. How do you know what a merge tag looks like? It looks just like this that they have displayed here. So it's an asterisk followed by a pipe, or in some people call it a bar, or just a uh, vertical line, uh, followed by the word merge, or whatever your merge tag is named, and then followed by an end bar line, and an asterisk. So that's the format it has to take. It cannot be bold, it cannot be italicized, it just has to be straight text. So on the left-hand column, it says first name, email address, address, and phone number. And then next to it, it tells you what type of label that is, or form field that is. So text, email, address, phone. On the next column, MailChimp is asking whether you want that required in your signup form or not. And the column next to that, it's asking whether or not you want it visible on the form or hidden, something you want to capture without people seeing it or putting an input. And this, the next column is put this tag in your content. So this is saying, if I was going to add a merge tag to a campaign, so say hello first name, then it's saying you would use this merge tag, see it already has it predefined with the asterisk and that little pipe or vertical line there. Okay, or you could, it says you could use this merge one as your merge tag. And it does the same thing for email. Now notice that email we cannot change because that's in there by default. MailChimp controls that and obviously you want to capture people's emails addresses. So that's why you can't edit it. Next we have address and then phone. Now you can go in here and you can edit this, but you are limited in the amount of characters that you have. So maybe I wanted to do biz add. And notice you cannot have any spaces. It will take out the spaces. So maybe it's a business address instead of a regular address. And maybe this is a bus phone, so I can do bus PHO. Something like that. And we'll see where this comes into play when we start putting these merge tags in our campaigns. Now in the last column, it says something here, default merge tag value. So let's say that you have people's email addresses, but you don't have necessarily their first names. Some of the first names are missing. Well, MailChimp says, well, you can add in a default merge tag value that will display in lieu of or absent of that particular field. So let's say I have a whole bunch of email addresses, but I don't have first names. Well, I still have first names here. So maybe I could just call the default value as friend. So in lieu of first name, so when I add in the merge tag first name to my campaign, it'll say friend instead of a blank space. Make sense? To add a field, go down here to the bottom and click on add a field. 
know, you'll have certain predefined options, such as a text or a number or radio buttons, drop downs, date, birthday. Uh, people want to put in a website address. This way, MailChimp knows what it is. So let's say we want to put in people's website address. We'll click on that. And that field will be added to our audience fields, or in this case, our sign up form. So we're going to call this website. You can see it comes in untitled so that you can create it. We can ask if it's required or visible. We're going to say it's visible but not required. And instead of merge to, we're just going to call it website. And then I'm going to click on save changes. Since we're capturing our information from our signup form, now it's time to take a look at our signup form, in particular our embedded form, because we're putting this on our website. So we go signup forms, embedded form. So here's a preview of our, of our embedded form. If you don't have a plugin or anything like that, you simply copy this and paste this code into your website and then test things out. So once you've captured this data, next we're going to show I'm going to show you how it all works in your campaigns. So let's click create just an ordinary email. This will work on landing pages. Uh, it'll work in automation. It'll work in a regular campaign. Uh, wherever you uh, have the ability to add merge tags, it will work. Uh, for us, we're just going to do a simple email. I'm going to call it merge. Merge. Click begin. So I'll select the strategic marketing solutions one. We'll do all subscribers and audience. Uh, one of the options that you can do right up front is personalize the two fields. So if you've captured first names, you can select that and say first name. So instead of saying, you know, Joe Schmo at gmail.com, it'll say Joe and then his email address. So it makes more personalization right up front. I'll uncheck that for this. Click save. From here, I'm just going to skip the rest, go into design the email. And we'll just pick something here. Okay, so I've clicked it in the uh, text box here. I'm just going to move this down a little bit. And we'll do left align on that. If I click into merge tags, you'll see that we've added in here's all of our member data. So we've had uh, first name, email address. There's our business address that we've added, phone number, website. So I could add any of this um, any of these merge tags in here, more than one, you don't have to use one. And then you'll notice that we have list data. So we could add in uh, subscriber counts, uh, unsubscribe link, forward to a link, the, mon the monkey reward stuff. Uh, we could add in Facebook like buttons, social media profiles, and even content helpers like that RSS feed items that I was talking about at the intro. So let's just do F name. Now you say, well, how come anything didn't come out, right? Why don't I see a first name there? So what you have to do here to check your merge tag is working properly is click on the preview and test, click on enter preview mode. And you notice here it has our default tag value as friend. So that's what people will see if they don't have a first name. So that's working. If I enable live merge tag information, if I turn that on, you'll notice that I now have a first name in there and no longer friend because Alberto here put in his first name when he signed up to receive the free ebook. And you can go through your entire list if you want to spot check. So that's how you can check it. You can also uh, X out of this and you can send yourself a test email and that too will uh, put in your first name when it's sent to your email address. So this is just getting started here. You can do a lot more with merge tags, but as long as you're capturing the customer data, the subscriber data, you can use that to then personalize it. So let's say they have birthdays coming up or they want their favorite color displayed on a certain date. You can do all that by capturing audience data and then filtering it out, segmenting it out, and then automating that to go out at a certain date or certain time 
uh, with a certain color in the header so that they get their personalization uh, and get more interaction with your email list. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. And to carry on your journey with MailChimp, don't forget to click on some of these links that are appearing right now so that you can continue on learning more about MailChimp. I'll see you in the next video.